Hi, Sean Green here with Soccer Coach TV. We've got a great guest today, Olga Delippi, Director of Coaching of CFC Valley, right here in Connecticut, in the United States. Olga, how are you doing this evening? Good. How are you doing, Sean? Good. Thanks for coming on with me, and uh, we're going to talk about soccer, get to know you a little bit. Olga, it's a well-known soccer personality here in the northern part of the United States. And uh, so, Olga, so you're from Albania originally. Correct. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your background uh, as a young player. So you were born in Kors, is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? Korcha, yeah. Korcha. Tell us yeah. a bit about Korcha. Ah, it's a beautiful city, and that's where I grew up, and that's where I started my, my soccer career there. Um, so I went to a school specialized for soccer there when I was a young kid. I think I started there when I was six years old, seven years old. So every day we uh, every day we were doing like two hours of soccer on that school. So that's where I got into soccer a lot there. So what, when did you actually start play, uh, playing at a serious level? On a serious level was, uh, well, I grew up on that club, on my club, which one the name of the club is Skanderbeo. So we were since young kids till uh, till the age of 15. That's where I start my uh, my almost professional career when I got called at the, U uh, at the Albania national team. And uh, I got called a couple of times with, my, with the first team as well to train with them and did some friendly games as well when I was very young, 16 years old. And the professional team is it? It's Skanderbeo. Skanderbeo. Uh, Skanderbeo. One of the yeah. best teams in uh, in Albania. Uh, seven times uh, winners of uh, Albanian Cup there, Premier League. They they've been in Champions League so many times as well. So what, it's kind, a of, very, what, very good team. what kind of crowds did they get in those games? We get we get about the, our stadium is not that big, but it's always full. So we get about uh, five six thousand all the time. And now, um, looking back on your coaching knowledge right now, compared to you know when you were a player at that professional club, coaching was a lot different back then. Oh uh, yeah. How would you compare? What kind of stuff? What What did you do uh, for training when you were a young player? How was well, it different from how you train players today? Well, based on on our coach, I I changed so many coaches, but mostly it was very physical. You know what I'm saying? So mostly it was fitness. And game, you know, so it wasn't too many tactics like we're doing now or technical stuff with the ball. I, back in the day, almost we had the whole teammates three, four balls, you know what I'm saying? So right. you don't have you don't have that kind of, you know, luxury these kids have today here. So the coach bring like 20 soccer balls or each kid has their own soccer ball. We The whole team had like three, four soccer balls. So that's why it was mostly fitness and, uh, and games. Well, you know, that's interesting, Olga, because... Um young coaches in the game now, right? Uh, they must think that coaching's been like this forever, you know, since the beginning of the game, and it has not. I remember when I was a young player playing in the Northeast of England, I mean, all we, literally all we did was we played by the side, uh, and, um, and we did wind sprints, we did fitness at the end of it, you know? Even a warm-up, there was no real pre-game warm-up. You stretched on your own. Often our warm-up would be, there'd be one player out in the, in the corner, crossing balls for everybody to try and head into the goal for the goalkeeper. That would be your warm-up back then. Yeah. You know? And what about, you played for the professional, you played professional in Albania and also which other countries? I played in Italy and I played in Greece. So I, I, I got recruited in Italy in uh, 1998 when we did the European Championship in, in Italy. So that's where I got scouted there uh, in North Italy, uh, close, to, uh, close to Florence. Uh, my career there was very short because I got a little homesick. So I played there about six months to eight months. And I moved back home and I started playing in Greece. In 1999, I, was, I started playing in, in Greece. And meantime, I was playing in Albania as well on second division. And playing for the national team, youth national team. Yes, I did play for U16, U17, U18, uh, Albania national team. Which countries have you played against? Oh, I played Tur Turkey, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Italy, uh, you name it. I played so many teams around. What is the most memorable game as a, as a national team player that you played? Oh, against Turkey. 
uh, I remember we needed to get a tie to qualify <laughs> and coach was like about game managing. I remember they had a kid where well, kid is, is, is almost 40 now, uh, last name Gokton, something like that. Uh, the kid was phenomenal. Like you have all the, all the roster for all the, all the, all the countries and the kid, he was 17 at that time, 16, actually my bad, 16. He was playing for Bayern Munich in Germany. So the kid was phenomenal and he was taking shots from like 40 yards and hitting the crossbar. And we, we had no plan on a freaking defend that guy. You know, it was, it was crazy, but up to the end, we got a tie one, one. So it was a very good game. Yeah. Uh, what's your most memorable experience playing professionally? Uh, you know, I missed, you know, the, you know, hanging out with my buddies, going, uh, going all over, all over the places, hotels, tournaments, uh, you know, trainings. That's what I miss. You know what I'm saying? That's where all these memories and actually I was going through, uh, through all my pictures and I see a lot of my pictures, like when I used to play all over the world. Hey, there's no great a thrill I, I, I should uh, 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 compliment than, than represent your country at a national level, you know, international level. How did you feel that first game when you were, uh, who did you play against your first international game? We played, uh, we played against Macedonia. How did you feel? How did you feel the national anthem was playing? Oh my God. There? It was, I mean, I can't describe that moment. You know what I'm saying? Goosebumps all over my body and... You know, and I can't describe that moment. Uh, to be honest, always I, I be, uh, at every single game, I, I used to be a little nervous. But after five minutes, I was like game on, you know. So, but the first game against Macedonia was a, was a big crowd, especially the game was in Macedonia wow. as well. And you, so. you played well, left back? No, I played left midfield and striker. I don't believe that. You don't, I don't believe you played striker. I've seen you play. <laughs> I've seen you play. <laughs> Uh, got a good left foot, but scoring goals. I that's my, that's my department, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in charge of all three kicks, penalty kicks and corner kicks. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about, um, oh, I forgot. Um, you left your boots here, Olga. Ah, oh, that's what I was there. That's my left yeah, boot. I'll bring, them over to, I'll bring them over to your house. So Thank you. Thank I'll you. I'll put a bit of polish on them, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks, so, God. Um, <laughs> So tell me a little bit about what led you to your journey to come to the United States. Um, at that time, so I came here in the United States 20 years ago. And at that time, so what was that, 2000, uh, I was playing soccer, professional soccer in Greece, second division, Castoria, that's what we call the team there. And um, my fiance, which one, she's my wife now, uh, she played a green card lottery, which one is very popular in Europe. So I got qualified. I won. <laughs> and that's where I came here because I got qualified. I won that green card lottery. I went to the embassy. I got the visa and I came here in the United States. And I've been here since then. You still have a lot of family back home in Albania? Yes, my parents are here, but I still have my brother and his family there. I got my grandma and I got a lot of cousins. So I still have a lot of families back home. And, you know... Um... And that's always a tough decision. You know, I did that. I left Newcastle when I was 18 years of age. It's always a tough decision to make, but it's something I've never regretted, um, you know, in my life. Um, when you came here uh, to the United States, uh, what was the first thing you did when you got here? What, where did you work? Oh, the first job was a factory job, Sean. You know, it was tough for me uh, when it came in. Like, it's tough even... To, I, I moved from Albania to here and even my English wasn't that great when I came. So it was tough for me in the beginning. So the first job was a factory. I worked in a restaurant. I, was, uh, I worked pizza delivery, you know. So I worked very, very hard in the beginning, you know. It's like um, no one gave me what I have right now. You know what I'm saying? I earned it and I worked so hard. And after that, I played a little bit like semi-pro uh, on a, with a team in Massachusetts. But after that, I got injured, so I tore my ACL on my left knee. So it didn't allow me to, to continue my, to pursue my, my dream to play more MLS. I mean, I'd, I was very good uh, condition, very fit. So, and after that, I got into coaching and I've been coaching since then. So when did you start CFC Valley? 
CFC Valley, I started CFC Valley four years ago, uh, actually with one team, you know, uh, one boys team. And uh, since then, I've been growing up every year, players and teams and coaches. So the, the CFC Valley is growing up a lot. In, and in, how, how, many, how many teams and how many kids do you have in the club now? Um, the teams is about uh, 14 teams right now, boys and girls. And for you, for you people watching this video, if you've ever seen me on YouTube um, on Soccer Coach TV, uh, working with those players, those are actually Olgut's club. And Olgut's been grateful enough, uh, grateful enough to allow me to work with the teams and, and show them on YouTube. And the hardest working kids, great kids, uh, very professional. Um, Olgut, uh, tell me a little bit, what about, what is the philosophy of CFC Valley? What is the, your culture as a club? Philosophy, I mean, we want to make sure, our philosophy is we want to make sure we make the game enjoyable for the kids. You know, and uh, we want to develop every single kid on the club. So if, if a kid make our teams, that we make sure we develop those kids. So, but again, our main thing is we want to make this game enjoyable for the kids. At the end of the day, it's a game. And uh, I, I see a lot of clubs and I see a lot of coaches out there they're putting too much pressure about winning or, you know, and some kids, it's not enjoyable for some kids, you know, they quit the game or, you know what I'm saying, or they get, they, they leave the field crying or something like that. So I, I'm not a big believer on that one. So our philosophy is we want to make the game enjoyable for our kids. We want to make our kids uh, to come back with a smile. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a big believer too that, uh, you know, one coach can absolutely support you know, uh, inspire you to, to, to fall in love with this game, you know? Uh, I know my high school coach inspired me to get into coaching. To I wanted to be like him. He was a great mentor to me. And on the converse of that, if you're a young player, um, if you're with the wrong coach, they can totally turn you off the game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just go, so to go on to your point there in terms of making it fun, it's getting that balance between professional, challenger kids, but at the end of the day, come on, let's face it, they're there. It's a sport, it's a game. Yeah. And, and um, right. it's not all about winning. You know, it's about that development of the players. As you know, I've seen you work. So uh, let me ask you a couple of more questions here. What could we learn? I want to talk about more about CFC in a second, but I did want to ask you this. What can we learn from Albania? As a, <sighs> as a culture, as, 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 as a country, um, what, can, what can we learn from them? Uh, it's, thing? It's, totally, it's totally different, you know, life. It's totally different culture, Sean. Uh, in Albania, every single kid play on the street. As you said, when you were a young kid, play 5v5. I used to play on the street all the time and with my club after. So uh, every single kid there plays soccer. The main thing is soccer, is a culture. Here is a little bit different. We have kids play multiple sports, and um, they train just three, four times a week, and they play a game in the weekend. When back in back home, they play every day, twice a day, three times a day, and they play multiple games. You know what I'm saying? So it's tough to compare Albania and uh, United States. You know what I'm saying? Here, soccer is growing up, and I see kids is getting more and more and more into soccer right now. But but still, there's a big difference between you know. Albania and here, Albanian kids and here. So that leads to the next question is, why haven't the United States won a World Cup? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's time. I, I don't know. It's such a big country and it's, it's, they get a tough time to put 25 players together, right? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer for that, Sean. I don't that. think, I mean, if you, if you look at some of the athletes, it's, it, I think it, to address the point that you were talking about, so many different sports in this country, isn't it? Yeah. There's one sport around the world, and that's football. It here, is. You know, here, you know, the, the soccer, baseball, basketball, you name it. And imagine if, if those players in the NFL or those players in the NBA were actually playing from young kids all the way through with a passion, playing soccer. Phenomenal athletes. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Um, Next question. 
who inspired you to, to get into coaching? Uh, who inspired me? You know, in the beginning, I mean, I did some coaching, you know, youth, youth coaching back home in Albania. And I wasn't that big fan, you know what I'm saying? Just to have fun with little kids. So it wasn't my objective when I was a player to become a coach. So when I came here to the United States, that's, uh, as I said, I was working multiple jobs and different jobs. So I decided to, to stick uh, with something I love, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to become a coach and uh, I went through all my licenses. I got all my licenses. And since then I fell in love. You know, it's a, it, and the, the club is pretty much a bit of a family affair, isn't it? Eh? Oh, Kate, absolutely. Your wife, Kate, is, is a major, major uh, part of, of, of that club. I'm sure she does so much work behind the scenes. Oh, she does a lot. And she, she supports me 100% uh, what I'm doing. Even when I was a player, I, I don't blame it. Like, sometimes I think about it. When I used to play all over Albania, all over in, in Greece, in Italy, all over. And she used to come and see almost all, all the games. Even today... Uh, but, uh, our daughter plays, so she's always on soccer field with me, you know. So, are you amazing. coaching her? Yes, I do coach her. Which one and is how's that? that relationship? What's that like? Uh, coach, I coached my kids when they were little, and I told them, I says, Look, if you want to be a good soccer player, I said, I can make you very, very good in a pretty short time, but you have to want to be that. I said, Just because I'm a, a, a coach, you don't have to play soccer if you don't want to, and uh. They played a little league. They they did those things, but I met, and I didn't try to live my life vicariously through them, you know. So, just did she just she respond to your coaching when you're coaching her? She does. She got totally my personality. So she's very very coachable. And she's very very competitive, and she's very eager to learn. She's like a sponge and take all the information. Sometimes she gives me that stinky eye, you know, but <laughs> that's normal, you know. She's a teenager, fourteen years old. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> And what about uh, the difference between coaching boys and girls? Somebody asked me that today on, on Facebook. Is um, find a big difference? It, it, is, uh, it is. When they're in a younger age, like I call you uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, and even 13 years old, it's not that big difference. But as, as long as when the girls become teenagers, that's where you start that separation. You have to be very careful what you're saying because they take it very seriously. And... Uh, uh, you can you can be loud or yelling to the girls. It's totally different. The boys they'll take a yelling or you know when when you 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 say something they'll do it. But the girls are a little bit more fragile when they get older. So you have to be careful what kind of message you get out because you might lose them for forever and they 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 don't like that. I've never coached a girls team in my life. I've always <laughs> been on the boys side. I've I've coached girls, females in clinics and things like that. But certainly. Uh, it's something I'd love to do, though. It's something I'd love to experience. Um, what's your favorite catchphrase as a coach? Don't steal one of mine. <laughs> uh, well, I get in there. I like that a lot. That's why I use it every time when the kids do something good, good cross, good shot, good goal. That's why I like. I like. A, I, I, I'm, I say a lot of time, get in there. So... You know, I've never met an Albanian I don't love, you know? My, <laughs> I, 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 seriously, my son is dating an Albanian, Aurora, and she is just, she's like a daughter to me. She's absolutely fantastic. And I know yes, Val up. and Clary and all these people that are associated with the club. And they're just absolutely phenomenal people, phenomenal people. Are they all like that? Uh, pretty much, we are very friendly. Uh, we make a lot of friends. You know what I'm saying? And the friendship uh, lasts forever with us. So tell me about the Albanian mafia. Is there really an Albanian <laughs> mafia? Uh, yeah, so you don't want to get on our bad side. <laughs> How would you say, Olga, in the last 10 years that you have evolved as a coach? Say it again, Strong. How would you say in the last 10 years you have personally evolved as a coach? How have you evolved? Involved? Evolved. How, how have you developed oh, or changed, uh, changed as a coach in the last 10 yeah. years? To be honest, every day, every uh, you learn something new from every coach. 
So every time you're on the field, you 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 learn something new. You you can never say, "That's it. I'm you know I'm complete." You never being complete. You never can be complete in this world. I say you can learn something new from from the worst coach in the world. You can learn something new from every single game. Uh, you can learn something new from uh, every time you do a session uh, session on the field. So, but uh, I see it ten years ago and now. The, the game evolved so much and uh, and even the coaching even the coaching license when you take it is, is so much complicated and so much uh, um, so what's your take on rondos I like rondos a lot it shows you the ability to to, to think quick uh, to, to make a decision under pressure. Yeah. Uh, shows you a lot your technical ability, but till one point, you know what I'm saying like uh, till one point, like always, I use rondos for warm up to 10, 10 to fifteen minutes in the beginning and after. I like to to do rondo with uh, with a point, not just moving the ball, but with a point. What I want to do a transition to defend, to attack, to to switch a point of attack. But you know what I'm saying depends on the topic uh, I want to uh, I want to do with my team. You know what I'm saying it's not just a basic rondo. I see a lot of coaches and a lot of a lot of teams they do just a basic rounder, but I like to do it something uh, something different. To be honest, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of rondos, <laughs> unless it's transitional. You know, you got a lot of movement in it, but you know, it ten, what what tends to happen is you know a lot of players are standing around unless it's done right, and you you, you you reinforcing the habits of just passing it and standing or moving two yards. I just don't like it on a personal level. I think it's overused. Well, that's why I like to add some movement. Like yeah. uh, I, I like to spice it up a little bit. Let's call it like that. Yeah. What's your biggest regret in your life? Uh, biggest regret is uh, uh, to continue to pursue my my career as a player. But there was too many factors. I I couldn't do that when I when I moved in U.S. One was um, I got injured. I tore my ACL. And to the the style of life here, you know, you got to pay the bills and you have to work, and um, so it's different style of life. So that's where it got me back to to be a soccer player, and I got into the coaching up there. So that's my biggest regret. I had the chance to to, to play another five five six years at least, and I didn't do it. Well, you know, you, you, it's probably been the beneficiaries of that have been the players that you've touched and. Um, Anybody who knows you, anybody who's watched you coach, and I've seen a lot of coaches, and that's all I've done my whole career is, is coach, and I've seen a lot of coaches. And hands down, you're the hardest working coach that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's, not, it's not uncommon for you to do two or three training sessions a night, uh, go to tournaments, and you're at five, six games, eight games sometimes, and you're all over. You get in your car, you travel an hour, you go to this game, you go to that game. And you're just relentless. You keep at it. You keep at it. You keep at it every single day. What makes you work so hard? Why do you work so hard? <laughs> Why I work so hard? Uh, to be honest, for me, is a is a pleasure. Uh, it's not a job. Uh, I love to be on a soccer field. I mean, as you say, that coach almost every day about five to six hours. Uh, I start from the university I coach, CCSU Division One, and after with the youth club. Uh, but it's enjoyable, and for me, uh, it's so enjoyable when I see the players' progress, the, the players develop, and those, uh, the smile, you know, they, they get me when, when they see me on the field. So even if I don't coach that team, as a coaching director, I like to go, uh, even on your games or even uh, someone else's game, just to, to see the kids, to see the parents. So to be honest, Sean, uh, for me, it's not a job. I mean, I know it's lo I put a lot of hours, but for me, it's a pleasure. And, you know, uh, if you love something, you don't need to work one day in your life. And I think that's why a lot of the kids um, stay with the club for many, many years. You get some of these kids when they're so young and, you know, they don't, they don't go. And I see a lot of kids transfer in teams and going to do the clubs. Your kids stay with you. Some of them started, you know, really yeah. young age all the way through into high school. They, they're, they're very loyal to, to me, to my coaches, to my program. As I said, I, I, I emphasize even on my coaches the same philosophy I have. I want the kids to, to come with a smile, live with a smile. And uh, as long as we make it enjoyable for them, they'll give us 150%. 
All right, next question. What do you look for when you uh, are attracting players to the club, or scouting a player to come play at CFC Valley? What qualities do you look for in, in, a, in a player? Um, on a youth, on youth age, I mean, I'm a big believer in development. So to be honest, as long as the kid is a little bit athletic, uh, I don't care if he struggles a little bit technically. Uh, I like to put that time and uh, you know and work on, on the on the player because, as I said, I'm a big believer on development. And uh, I've been on this game for so many years, almost 20 years now, and I've seen kids starting from here. And after two or three years, you, you see, and you, you never thought that kid would be such a great soccer player. So, to be honest, as long as they're athletic, uh, I, I give every single kid the chance. Yeah. Um, how come you're not a very good swimmer? <laughs> I'm a shark. I, 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 I'm always underwater. <laughs> and why, why, when I swim that day, did you pull my leg and pull me under the water? I told you, I'm that, sure. That was, that was like very that. dangerous. Very dangerous. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about it after that. I told you, I'm a shark. I like that talk. <laughs> How would you describe your coaching style, Olgert? As I say, uh, I'm, uh, I'm demanding what I need to be demanding, but I'm very fun when I, uh, you know, so majority of the, uh, of the train, my train is, is a lot of fun. And I like to enjoy my time on the field and with the kids. And um, if I do that, my kids will enjoy that too. So, uh, my style is demanding, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun during my session. Okay, right. So, who's the best coach from Newcastle, England, with an English accent that you know? Oh my God. <laughs> That's a tough so, question. Olga, listen. I you, know you, so many guys. <laughs> So, Olga, listen, thanks for coming online with me tonight. I really appreciate it. If, um, if, if one of the parents out, uh, in Connecticut are watching this video on YouTube and they wanted to get a hold of you, and uh, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you, Olga? Well, we have a uh, web page as well, our website, uh, cfcvalley.com. And meantime, we have a social media in Facebook and Instagram, which one same thing as CFC Valley. Uh, they can shoot us a text message, email, or whatever, and we, we usually respond in an hour to, to all, all, the, all the requests. Well, Olga, as I said before, I think you're one of the best coaches I've ever seen. You know, you, you, Thank you, 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 <laughs> nobody can match. You, you're like the energizer bunny of football coach, and nobody can match you, and nobody can stay up with you. And, and, it, and I'll just say, uh, I have a lot of experience coaching. If you're a parent out there and you're looking for a club, you're in Connecticut, and you're looking for a club, get top class coaching, coach who really cares about you, get in touch with CFC Valley, check it out, come to one of the practices, watch us train and, and see if you like it. But I'll get, listen, thank you so much. You're blessed. And I, I feel blessed to uh, be your friend. Uh, your family's a fantastic <laughs> family. The other day I was sitting in here, bought out my mind, knocking on the door. Here's this guy bringing me some dessert. Uh, an Albanian dessert Kate, thank you for that. It was beautiful. I appreciate it very much. And uh, so, Olga, listen, thanks again for being on the show, and I wish you the best of luck, buddy. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. All the best. Thanks. All right. Get in there, Gav. Let me uh, pause the recording here. Thank you.